Hi, in a previous video, which I'll link in at the end and down below, if you haven't seen it, we looked at uh, the advantages of using the vernier control on your oscilloscope. This is when your signal might be uh, too big to display on your screen like this, and therefore you're not able to, it's outside the uh, ADC range of your uh, converter front end and it can't do measurements on that and if you turn it down like this you're wasting a lot of your analog to digital converter range on there and you may not get as good a resolution or accuracy on your uh, automated measurements and things like that so you would what you do is you hit the vernier control like this fine adjustment mode it says variable down there on the scope and you can bring it so the waveform's just within full scale range like that and you take advantage maximum advantage of your analog to digital converter range all those eight bits that you've uh, got available if you've got a fancy pantsy scope 10 bits or whatever so uh, that's just a handy little tip to get that but a lot of people ask the valid question do these modern scopes when you actually put it in vernier mode like this do, is this just like a software trick does it actually do the vernier adjustment does it actually change the gain in the hardware on the front end and hey let's answer that question right now by doing a teardown and some probing to find out if a modern scope like this Siglent um, SDS 1104XE actually does do real hardware gain control just like the old school analog scopes. So we showed in the previous video that the, you can, the results you actually get from doing this do seem to be real. So it does seem to be uh, you know, doing something useful. But is it actually doing that in the hardware or is it some sort of you know, software trick and then it's, it's giving you some extra you know, warm and fuzzy software resolution where it really shouldn't be there? Well, there's only one way to find out. Let's tear down a scope and probe up its clacker. Right, so I have actually taken apart this poor victim Siglent 1104XE and I have probed right up its clacker and we can actually see and probe uh, the waveforms of the vertical gain amplifier front end. But let's take a quick look at the uh, tear down of the front end of this thing and see what actually, if there is a, a digitally variable adjustable gain type circuit or chip in there. All right, so let's take a look inside the front end here. Uh, this is from my uh, teardown photos. I'll have to link in the teardown video if you haven't seen it. This is the bottom side of the analog front end. It's uh, shielded. As you can see, there's just a bunch of trannies and diodes on there and a bunch of passives, not much else. So it ain't there. But if we have a look at the top side here and uh, it comes in on the left, that's the B and C there. And it's got the requisite relays and uh, some trimmer caps. We can uh, 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 tweak it. But if we have a look at some of the chippies in here, this one up the top is a 74 uh, HC595 serial uh, to parallel interface so that they can, they don't have to have all the lines coming from the main controller over to the front end. Anyway, what we're interested in is this one here. Look at this. 8370. That's an analog device's 8370. Ha, ah, let's have a look. Here it is. And a low frequency to 750 megahertz digitally controlled VGA. That's not a video graphics adapter. Um, that's a variable gain amplifier. And it's got programmable low and high gain, uh, less than 2 dB resolution. Uh, so you can adjust from minus 11 dB to plus 17 dB gain, two different uh, ranges, 6 dB to 34 dB. So I can go to minus 11 to plus 34 dB gain. And it's a differential input, differential output. And as you can see, it's got an adjustable preamp here and adjustable uh, transconductance, which is uh, the gain here. And it's, you know, it claims to be have like precision uh, gain range and it's got a serial 8-bit digital interface, which we're going to tap into to see. And that's, that's basically all it is, is it's a digitally controlled or digital gain controlled amplifier perfect for differential adc drivers and oscilloscopes and stuff like that i'm surprised they don't actually have 
oscilloscope there as one of the uh, functional things for it. Anyway, a low cost digitally controlled variable gain amplifier that provides precision gain control, uh, low noise, excellent distortion performance, wide bandwidth uh, for modern receiver designs, etc, etc. And here's the magic word, a vernier. 7 bit transconductance stage provides 28 dB of gain range at better than 2 dB resolution and 22 dB of gain. Better than 1 dB resolution. So you can, the software can potentially adjust the gain of the front end that goes into the ADC in 1 dB resolution steps. So as you adjust that vernier, that fine control, in theory, if the software supports it, it can adjust this, but we won't know until we actually measure it, whether or not it's actually sending the codes using the vernier. It's obviously going to be using uh, these particular uh, different gain stages for the different fixed millivolt ranges, you know, one volt per division, 100 millivolts per division, 10 millivolts per division, etc. It's going to be switching all those ranges, but does it do it on the vernier? It's more than capable with this chip. Theory of operation is fabricated with the 25 gig silicon bipolar process for those playing along at home, and we're seeing the block arch architecture. This transconductance stage is digitally programmable gain, and this is quite complex actually, how it uh, has different uh, performance characteristics depending on the particular range that you're in. Less than 1 dB resolution, less than 2 dB resolution. It's got two different gain stages and then a uh, programmable transconductance amplifier inside that. And the gain's actually uh, load dependent too for those playing along at home. But here's the digital interface. It's a simple 8-bit digital interface. It just accepts a single word here. By the looks of it, that's it. There's a latch signal that goes low. When that does, uh, it has a clock and just a data uh, stream on the input, starting with most significant bit to least significant bit. So it looks like you only feed in the eight bits and that's it. You can configure all the gain stages. There's a typical uh, example application. And here is the gain code that we're interested in. I expected to find like a table of like, okay, this is uh, one dB um, for each bit or whatever, but it's actually a formula here which you've got to put in. The total gain is the gain code with the vernier plus a pre-gain most significant bit. And it actually, you know, it comes out at X amount, X point, X, X, X amount uh, volts per volt. So uh, obviously you've got to calibrate uh, these ranges in software and that's what Siglent would do at the uh, factory or you could do in some sort of uh, user calibration or something like that. But once you've done the fixed ranges, then the other ranges would be known uh, steps. So you wouldn't have to recalibrate that. But yeah, that's what it does. You just put in uh, the value of your register. The first most significant bit is whether or not you're in the high gain range or the low gain range. But after that, it's a seven bit or 128 step uh, gain stage. So yeah, it's more than capable of doing this. So let's uh, hook up the scope and see if it actually does adjust the gain of this thing in the vernier stage. Right, so now comes probing this thing. Unfortunately, uh, it's a bit of a pain in the butt because it's a 0.65 millimeter TSOP package and that's you know, too small to get your traditional like uh, easy hooks in there on the individual pins like you can on a regular SO package. So that's not gonna cut the mustard. And if you just got the one probe, of course, you can get in there and touch it just if you hold the uh, tongue at the right angle. But then if you slip, you gotta short the pins out and you can potentially use like a, uh, like a stand like this, one of these uh, flexi stands and you can put your probes in here like this and you can muck around and you can precision locate them on there, but then they spring back. But they, you know, you can do that kind of thing. But then the problem, is we've got to operate the controls so even the most minute uh, thing in this let alone getting three of these probes on there that's just going to be a complete no-show so we've got no option but to actually uh, solder some wires onto there and then you put some uh, strain relief on here because usually those joints aren't going to be that strong especially like it's really difficult to get in there and the so you know the joints might be a bit how are you doing but as long as they're touching so we just take the stress off those then we just have some uh, fly wires coming out we can attach with our regular probes uh, either scope probes or logic analyzer probes.
Beauty. Got uh, three signals. Channel one's data. Channel two is clock. Channel three is the latch signal. And I've got it set up for normal trigger in here. You don't want it in auto mode because then you'll just uh, continually get your signals and you don't want to always be single shot capturing this. So you want normal mode so that you can run it and then every time you get a signal like this, bingo, it triggers like that and we can see it over here. So every time we change our volts per division setting, we will get a, you, know, pro, oh, you can see it change a little bit over there, but every time we change it, we will get a new trigger over there. And ordinarily, it's not actually triggering. And I'm actually triggering from the uh, latch signal. So when it goes negative, that's the only time that the data is actually valid to that particular chip. So you can see here that there's multiple packets of uh, data and clock here, but only one of them is going to be accepted by that chip when that latch goes negative. So that's the one we want in there. You can see it, it stays uh, low for a long period of time, but it's only sending one little packet of data to that particular chip. The reason is there's all this other uh, stuff which we uh, ignore over here. In fact, let's go right out on the time base. Seven different packets there every time we change the volts per division setting. So it must be updating all of the different channels, even though we're only changing channel one. So that may not be the smartest thing to do in software, but the uh, chips that aren't latched will just ignore this. So obviously there's multiple chips on that same bus and that's how you do it. That's why you got the uh, latch line. So I'd say it's, uh, yeah, it's probably sending out data to all the uh, chips and that just saves uh, lines, of course. So and you don't have to have a, a discrete set of uh, lines going to each chip. So there it is. There's our data. There's our clock going into that chip. And if I then change the volts per division, you can see our data is definitely changing. So that's it. Sorry, you can't see it on the screen. Take my word for it. 10 volts per division, five volts, two volts, one volt, 500 millivolts, 200 millivolts, 100, 50 millivolts, 20 millivolts, 10 millivolts, five millivolts, two, and one millivolt. Oh no, we can get a 500 mic. You can see that there's no difference. I'm now actually switching between one millivolt and 500 microvolts per division. You can see that there's absolutely no difference in the data whatsoever. So we're not getting any extra gain there. All we're doing is software magnifying that in software. So it's not a true 500 microvolt scale. Um, what we want, what we want to know is okay. The data changes. I don't care what the data is, okay? It's in there. It's choosing uh, the particular register settings as we change the uh, millivolts per division. It's choosing one of those fixed gain settings that it's actually uh, calibrated for, um, which will match the range of the analog uh, to digital converter as best it can. But what we want to do is if we press the vernier here, what happens? So I'm going to put it fine adjustment mode. Oh, yeah, 494. You see it's updating every time. Oh, 482, look at that. It's jumping. It's changing. It's changing, so it's definitely doing something. It, it really is changing that data. It, oh, actually, every step. I don't think it's actually repeated a step, has it? So it looks like it's increasing probably like a 1 dB gain uh, for each time we adjust that vernier. That's interesting. So to know what the exact range is, you'd have to decode the data here. There are some combinations of uh, code where it doesn't change at all. Like I'm flipping between those two there and this data is exactly the same. So it's obviously gone well, I don't need to change the range. And there you go for that one there as well. Now, I initially thought this wasn't actually counting up in binary, and that was strange because the formula is uh, the gain bit, which is the first one here, which is always zero by the looks of it when we're in the vernier. You'll notice how that, though, some, I just changed it by one uh, vernier position. You notice how it actually um, had this extra pulse here. This is actually nothing, but that's not going to count because it only registers the data 
on the positive edge here is so the most significant bit which is the first one is always zero so therefore it's always in low gain mode so the rest of it so you can ignore that if that just start pops up it might just be a quirk of the uh, software algorithm that, that they're using that's very common there's nothing wrong with that as long as the data is valid when that uh, clock signal comes along so if I adjust that vernier again sorry it's jumping around because there does seem to be a bit of variable timing in there. Once again, I'm not sure why that's doing the real-time operating system. The scope has to do stuff, I guess. Okay, so let's start at this one, perhaps. We've got one, 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 one there. So we've got four ones. And then we've only got the one, one at the end. So it skips through the one, zero. Then we've got one, zero. So if you look at those four bits there, it went from one, 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 one to 0001 now it's 0010 and if we keep going 0011 so it is see it is kind of, yeah it is kind of counting up yep and that's what you'd expect because it needs to increment a little bit again each time i'm actually surprised that it uh, sort of like fine compensates the range almost every turn of that vernier that's that's really quite remarkable. I, I expected much coarser, you know, gain control than that. And of course, uh, you rely on the gain. And they can't individually. There's no way at the factory they've individually calibrated the gain on each one of these vernier steps. So they'd only do it on the particular course sequence like this so they just calibrate each one of those ranges and then you're relying on the uh, fine software steps the accuracy of the steps with inside the variable gain amplifier itself to give you your calibration on your fine vernier control and there's nothing wrong with that that's exactly what i expected so there you go i hope i answered that question is uh do modern digital oscilloscopes actually have digital vernier control in there do they actually adjust the gain and in the case of the siglent uh the answer is yes it does because it's got a pretty funky variable gain amplifier in in there designed for just such vernier control but not every uh digital scope is going to have this like the rigol for example i can't find in the front end i've reversed i have done a whole video which you can see at the end it's a really cool video of how to uh how to do reverse engineering Engineering, essentially and I reverse engineer the front end of the Rigol DS 1054Z and it doesn't have such a variable gain amplifier but it does have some uh, digital gain control with inside the analog to digital converter uh, chip itself but yeah that's not as good as this so effectively I don't think the Rigol uh, does it but the Siglent does about other scopes I have a look at the teardown. Leave it in the comments down below. Well, I've done various teardowns of various oscilloscopes over the years. You can go look over uh, my high-res photos on my EV blog Flickr account. You'll be able to see the front ends for yourself of various scopes and see if there's a variable gain amplifier in there. So there you go. Um, it's not just a software thing. It's actually doing real hardware gain. So there are advantages to making your waveform, using your Vernon control and making your waveform as large as possible when you do measurements because it's got more bits of the analog to digital converter to work with. And the gain inside the variable gain amplifier is going to take care of your uh, calibration for you. Remember, um, scopes like this are only a percent you know, 2% accurate, stuff like that on their vertical. So not, not a huge amount of absolute accuracy, but hey, once your ranges are calibrated, you can actually uh, do comparative uh, measurements and things like that and get the resolution. And if you use more of your ADC range, then you're going to get more bits to play with and it's going to give you a more accurate, in quote marks, <laughs> measurement. Anyway, hope you liked that. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up and as always, discuss down below. Catch you next time.